All right. We're back. A little late because uh, I had to get a needle stuck in my arm. What these guys have to say. If you can be the only one here with the mortal fear of Yotsu, you tormented these people. At her presence, and should so such strife. It is as Lord Hien says, the Empire is on the move, and we, as ever, find ourselves on the back foot. Lord Hien and Master Alphanel look troubled. Something is afoot. While you were out searching for Jufu Jufuya, we received word from our shinobi allies. An imperial airship has been sighted over Doman soil. Our visitor's objective remains unclear. It may be another attempt to recover Yatsuyu or a prelude to invasion. Either way, the craft reportedly advances at speed and appears bound for Castrum Luminous. I mean to go there and ascertain their intent. If we ride out in force, it will only end one way, so we will, shall keep our numbers to a minimum. Yigiri, Essigos, can I count on you? Yes, my lord. Alize and I will fain play our part as well. We will not stand idly by while a common foe threatens the lands of our friends and allies. We should be glad for your help. You are acquainted with Hakuru? I believe that I bid you seek him out and assist in maintaining order in the Enclave. When the people see an imperial airship, the airship they are liable to panic. I would have you assure them, and should I come to it, aid in their evacuation. Very well. We shall depart at once. You take care. What of me, my lord? The Empire may well be after Yatsuyu. You ought to remain here and guard her until my return. As you wish. Pray stay close to Asagos and Yigiri. Well, well. Guard duty and not a breath of protest. Now I've seen it all. To cast from Flunus, then. Let us find out what the Empire's game is. The area is secure. Whatever our visitor's purpose, they plainly believe I can achieve it alone. The craft should come into view at any moment. Let us wait, wait them inside the castle.
In former times, such signals were used to announce the coming of an emissary of peace. In Doma, at least. But could that truly be their intent? Who can say? Whatever they want, we cannot simply blast them out of the sky. Not when they were so gracious as to honor one of our cherished traditions. I would not have it said that we Dolmans want for propriety. Then I shall go and reconnoiter. Nay, that won't be necessary. We will meet them openly. I would welcome this student of Dolman history in person, whomsoever he or she may be. As you wish, my lord. I shall arrange for a signal of our own to be fired in answer. We should be received by the Lord of Dorma himself. I just want to say that uh, Asai's um, way of speaking doesn't really put on airs of truth telling. Just immediately by the ways well that we should be received by the Lord of Doma himself. I but afford an emissary of peace, the courtesy he is due. Welcome to Doma, my lord. Ah, where are my manners? I am Asahi Sas Brutus, ambassador plenipotentiary of Garlemal. He is heir to the Nai-Uri clan, and Yotsu's stepbrother. It seems I need not introduce myself. Not in the presence of the famed Yugiri Mistwalker. Your skills as a shinobi are known far and wide, my lady. It is true. The former acting viceroy is my sister. Yet, bonds of kinship aside, we have precious little in common. As will soon become plain, I come not to sow strife, but to end it. I am of the Populares, a collective which represents the interests of the common man. Long have we labored to bring about reform to the Empire's provincial policy. Happily for us, our master acknowledges the need for change. Indeed, his radiance, Emperor Varis Zos Galvus, personally sanctioned this mission, granting me the authority to speak with his voice. To negotiate peace with Dorma. Well then. We have much to discuss. Will you accompany me to my hall? Gladly, my lord. Just the way he speaks, it just seems gross. It's like... No, he's being a lying sack of shit. I say, do I stand in the presence of the fabled Icon Slayer? What an honor. Lord Yen is magnanimous in, in victory. Given our nation's troubled history, we do not ex expect much hus such hospitality. Peace? After all they've done? Never has the word rung more hollow. We shall escort our guests across the river to the Enclave. Yigri, pray, go on ahead to the Yakuza Manor docks. Docks and see that the ferries are ready. Oh. 
keep hitting the wrong button. That's all right. I don't know why they named this manor Yakuza Manor. Which the Yakuza, Yakuza in Japan are, well... They're not known to be the best of people. Actually, quickly... Oh, this grilled turban. Hop on some XP boots. Upon disembarking, we'll proceed directly to the hall, where we may enjoy some privacy. Such senses of devastation greeted us on our journey here. The bitter wages of war. I have read much about the architecture and geology of Doma. Words do not do it justice. Lord Yen and I will accompany the Imperial Delegation of the First Fairy. When you are ready, speak with the boatman, and I will join and join us on the other side. Why are you traveling alone? We can't fit you. All are free to travel in and out of the Enclave. Do you see passage? Welcome to the Domain Enclave. We have not been here before. There's a car in the shirt. The Zenskai uh, hold the purse strings around here. It seems time to tell, will tell if there's right to place our trust in them. First things first, into all the Ethernet shards. I can teleport directly to the Enclave. And this is the last one. It's like Idleshire. Thanks to Master Alphano and Mr. Salize's assurances, the people have reacted calmly to Imperial presence. The residents took the news of the Imperial delegation well enough to be as business as usual. Though it would be a peace negotiation, I was curious to see what the ambassador brings to the discussion table. Master Winsmall, you honor us with your presence. Amended, yep. Do you agree? Lord Hian has requested that Master Alfano and Mr. Salize uh, also be present at the negotiation. 
There you are, Skips. So first things first, what do you think of the Enclave? I must say it's quite proud of what my countryman has accomplished in the time. We even have an eighth right now, courtesy of the Onishishu. Be sure, sure to tune to it, would you? Since it was has the warrior of light once it has the warriors of light sealed approval, people might actually start using the thing. And on the matter at hand, the ambassador and his retinue are at the at my hall, taking their ease ahead of the negotiations. I want you there when the talking starts. It will serve to send a message to the Empire that Eosia and Doma stand united. It is not normally one of hollow pos I'm not normally one of hollow posturing, but in this game of nations, such gestures carry weight. Oh, and should you feel uneasy about speaking for the science, Alphano and Alize will also be there. You need only eat, drink, and look imposing. There you'll come. I'll be there. I'll be there, ready to beat their face if they do anything out of line. You know, I could count on you. When you're ready, come and join me at my humble abode. The, the Kian Khan. Kian Khan. The Kian Khan. Kian Khan. Cosmo will see you in. Same as like when going talking to the Sultana or uh, the Admiral or. Lotian is expecting you. Make sure you in. Might be the up. Oh, representative of the Confederacy. No, uh, maybe? No, that's. I don't know where he's from. On behalf of my delegation, I offer you my humblest thanks. Never did I imagine that I would meet the gallant and noble Lord of Dorma himself, nor be welcomed into his magnificent hall. You'll forgive me if we forgo the pleasantries. You say you are come to negotiate peace. Unless I am mistaken, such negotiations are typically conducted between sovereign nations. I was not aware that the Emperor had recognized Dormer's sovereignty. His radiance has yet to do so, that much is true. Know, however, that he has expressed willingness to cede Dorma to her ancestral masters and treat with her as a friend. Since the days of Emperor Solus, the Empire has aggressively expanded its territory. While you may not agree with our Founding Father's policy of expansion, I believe there is room for discussion on the matter of his lifelong goal, to rid the world of icons. Icons are a blight upon this star. They cannot be suffered to exist. This you know as well as we. In his wisdom, Emperor Varus wishes to explore the possibility of an alliance to combat this common threat. On the condition that Dorma renounces summoning and pledges to police the Corjin's practice of it, his radiance would extend the hand of friendship. Dorma has never shown any appetite for summoning, and it should go without saying that we will address any threat to our people, Icon or otherwise. With regard to the Kojin, I must stress that they only resorted to summoning under extreme provocation. When the Ruby Sea was at peace and their sacred relics safe, they looked not to their kami for protection. Yet even now, there are certain parties who would destabilize the region with ill-conceived military forays. Unless they alter their course, we cannot hope to be rid of icons. Quite. I can but apologize. In seeking to eliminate icons, the Empire creates them. 
Tis an irony among ironies, one with which the people of Eorzea are well acquainted, I am told. Indeed, many summonings are the result of persecution, the weak being driven to call upon the divine for deliverance from the strong. So it was in Alamigo, the bitter fruit of Galian oppression. A tragic state of affairs. If we are to put an end to summoning once and for all, it shall not be through might, but harmony. Yet we continue to repeat our mistakes, oblivious to the lessons of history. My comrades and I would change all that. We, Populares, have campaigned long and hard for a shift in imperial policy. And at last, the Emperor has seen fit to lend us an ear. Alas, there is a faction within Garlemald that would obstruct our every attempt at reform. A collection of pure-blooded Garlians who seek to consolidate their own supremacy. The Optimates. Lest you wonder, theirs was the hand that loosed our forces on the Confederacy. T'was a regrettable incident, one that flies in the face of everything we believe. And I swear to do all in my power to prevent a reoccurrence. That would be most welcome. But if I may speak plain, if the Empire itself is not of one mind, how can we be certain that any peace we negotiate will be honored? I cannot blame you for doubting us. Indeed, I should find it strange if you did not. And so, in the name of building trust, I would like to make a proposal. A prisoner exchange. Hmm. Under Galian rule, no few Dormans were conscripted into the Imperial Army. We would repatriate them in return for those of ours you captured in the recent conflict. Naturally, any exchange would include the acting Viceroy. Yotsu? What makes you think we have her? Forgive me, my lord. Was it not your wish to speak plain? Let us not play games. I desire only to work to our mutual benefit. The Optimates tried and failed to take my sister by force. I would succeed by peaceable means, thereby strengthening my party's hand. It would be a lie to say I would not also be glad of my sister's safe return. Hmm. A fellow plain speaker. How refreshing. Very well. Your proposal has merit, but I will need time to consider it. Of course, my lord. May we remain in Dorma until you have come to a decision? You shall be our honored guests. You giddy. I leave the Ambassador and his retinue in your care. See that they are well looked after. You have our gratitude, Lord Hien. We shall look forward to your answer. Well, that was unexpected. Turn it down now. <clears throat> you can say that again. I still don't know quite what to make of it at all. But on the surface, a prisoner exchange does seem a good way to begin. The question is, can they be trusted? <clears throat> hmm. They had not to gain by divulging the details of their internal divisions. As it stands, we have no reason to doubt them. 
But the ambassador mention of Yatsuyu left me ill at ease and made his grand talk of peace seem uncannily like a lengthy preamble. You think this might be a ruse to facilitate her retrieval? Perhaps, though I cannot fathom why they would, would go to such lengths. Yatsuyu may have been the acting viceroy, but she is not guardian, nor even highborn. Her value would presumably lie in what she knows. Which brings us to the little manner, matter of her memory loss. If her present condition, she would not yet yield any worthwhile intelligence, nor is she worth much as a bargaining piece. Alphano, you are well acquainted with the Empire's methods. I would have your thoughts on this matter. My knowledge is at your disposal, Lord Yen. While the Ambassador's proposal is appealing in principle, it would be remiss of us not to give it due scrutiny. Indeed. Though it seems to me I have little choice but to accept, re re accept regardless. With so many of our brothers and sisters languishing in Imperial camps, I cannot well turn my back on a chance to secure their repatriation. Only the Kami know when I, it, <laughs> I will be afforded another. But ere we continue, shall we excuse these two? I fear, fear what follows will bore them to tears. I was just about to show myself out as it happens. Come on, Miss Ghost, let's leave Alphano to dispense his copious knowledge. Heard a ding, and I don't know what that was. Someone is still slow for being made to watch watch at Shakazuki. Go and keep Alize company. We, will, we are safe for now. All right, I'm going to make a uh, quick, like, two-minute break. I need to refill still because I've been told after my COVID shot today. Uh, that I should drink lots of water. I'm going to get myself some water. So, be right back. All right, back. Uh, chance to relax at last. No one I'm out of my debt, that's a ghost. Though no weapons are drawn, a negotiator is no less a battle, and the stakes are, can be every bit as high. One mis misplaced word, and people would die. It takes someone with a cool head, and I'll be the first to admit that's not me. If we're left with the eternal question, what do you do while they prattle on? Some takoyaki. It's takoyaki. That's that's a real food. I believe, I want to say this is like a fried octopus. Hmm. 
Yeah. Takoyaki or octopus balls are ball shaped shaped Chinese snack made of a wheat flour based batter and cooked in a special molded pan. It is typically filled with minced or diced octopus tempura scraps, pickled ginger, and uh, green onion. Yeah, it's just this like hot plate with like little divots in it and you, like it's street food too so you, you'll see see places they'll be making takoyaki they'll have this battered octopus ball well all this and they'll they'll pop it in this pan they'll be like flipping it over with chopsticks it's pretty impressive i have not been to japan i've seen this through mass media so I don't think there's any VO for this one. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> All right, for one to a better suggestion, let's say you have a brief tour of the newly liberated Doma. It'll be interesting to hear how people are faring in their own wor words. It's not as if we miss, we're miss, we'll be missed here, or will we? Let's go. A moment, if you will. Ah, Yugri in the Sahi, uh, was it? Have some business with us, ghost. This is no pleasure, my lady. I merely wish to exchange a few words with the famed slayer of gods and champion of Eorzea. It is truly an honor. I'm trying to do this as sarcastically as possible because this is how I felt, feel like he's talking this entire time. It's he's, he's just gross. <laughs> Such heartfelt admiration. One would almost forget that you're an envoy of the Empire. Oh, is it so strange? We may have have stood on opposing sides in the past, but I have no contradiction in lauding the men who would do battle with our common enemy. And least we forget this is my homeland. It would be remiss of me not to at least thank him for containing the threat posed by the Kojin's vile icon. Now, if I may continue. As we speak, Lord Hien deliberates over my proposal. And I would take this time to see the land I once called home. Though Yugri is certain to be a jovial escort, the excursion wouldn't be all more enjoyable in your company and safer besides. So oh, condescending. The ambassador has the right of it. He is not like to come to harm with you at his side. Will you join us? I'm not quite sure you'd be safe with you. <laughs> Come now, I suppose. There's not else for us to do until Lord Ian has reached its decision, and will we not at this moment discussing how best to learn more about the current state of Doma? It's settled then. The four of us shall make a brief excursion through Yangsha. Might we f start at the town of Monzen? It would seem that I would see what has become of Doma Castle. Very well, if you'll follow me. Don't worry, I'm ready to kick his face. Like, kick his face. I will... I will kick his face. Actually, I'm first gonna, gonna talk to Kozakura. That guy at the dock basically implied, Hey, go talk to Kozakura. Oh, as a ghost, it's a rare honor indeed to receive heroes such as you. Pray allow me to introduce myself. My name is Kozakura, and I manage the accounts for the Shazenkai. Oh, but you must be unfamiliar with our organization. Forgive me, forgive me. At present, we are largely concerned with facilitating the reconstruction and revitalization of the Enclave. Needless to say, you ha we have our work cut out for us. It is quite fortuitous, actually, you being here. I had mind to petition your assistance. Hey! <laughs> Calm down. Oh, 
Right you are. It's rather difficult to converse while staring at one's feet. <laughs> and you would doubtless benefit from an explanation. Like... No! I mean, I'm good at beating the crap out of people. You know? I can do some diplomatic things, but that's better lo left to better people. But in any case, <laughs> in case, I'm just a normal person. I just have a thing that I'm good at. I can beat the crap out of people and icons. I don't need this sort of reverence. <laughs> I'm, I'm humble in that matter. As you may know, the Enclave was once the economic and cultural center of Doma. Alas, it suffered terrible devastation at the hands of the Empire, both during and following the fabled rebellion of yesteryear. That it and other ruins might stand as a testament to the folly of resistance, extensive reconstruction was forbidden by the Imperial Viceroy. Of course, there is no longer a concern. At long last, we are free to rebuild the Enclave, to restore the heart of our great once great nation and show the world that Doma lives on. But, as I said before, we have our work cut out for us. We have limited funds and material resources, not to mention a lack of skilled craftsmen. Which brings me back to the matter I wish to discuss with you, that of our brothers and sisters in Eorzea, of refugees that settled in Revenant's Toll. I was given to understand that they have worked closely with the local leadership to build and maintain such, such much of the settlement. Many new trades before they left, and those that did not doubtless learned that they might earn to, learn that they might earn their keep. If they were to return home and aid us in the reconstruction effort, it would be a tremendous boon. Would you be willing to speak with them on our behalf? You can count on me. Ah, Essigos. Ah, Essigos, taking an interest in the Shazenkai. Well, it seems as good a time as any to discuss the matter. Taking a break from negotiations. Or... Just out of phase of time. I'm grateful beyond measure that you and the science of the Seventh Dawn for welcoming Yigiri and my people to their in their hour of need. As the beneficiaries of their kindness, they have made every effort to repay you and the people of Revenant's Toll. Nevertheless, we here bear a responsibility as well. Kozakura, if you'd be so kind. Yes, my lord. We will send them a considerable gift as a gesture of gratitude and goodwill. However, I would like that missive to be delivered to the Adventurers Guild representative in advance. If you were to personally hand it to the man, it would be honored. Excellent. I knew I could count on you, my friend. Pardon my interruption, Kozakura. I look forward to seeing your progress. Oh dear, I hope we don't disappoint him. Anyways, I'll, I'll not keep you. Thank you again for your assistance and safe travels. So what this ends up doing is it opens up this little donation basket, which I don't think I can use right now. Basket is clearly designated to hold a large quantity of items, but for what purpose? You cannot say. Mainly I need to unlock it. Basically, I can vendor stuff here, get extra cash, and uh, unlike... Uh, vendoring something to a vendor somewhere else. And as I donate, I could do up to like 20,000 or something like that um, uh, a week. And as I do that, it gives like little mini quests and we see the rebuilding of the Enclave. It's pretty cool. Pretty neat. And I've got a bunch of stuff I want to vendor that I've been saving for that to be unlocked. But I have a bit to do on that. That's also side content. We won't worry about that. Uh, speak with Asahi. Where, where is he? Is he in the enclave? No, he's outside. Okay. I'm going to say one webber, and that will take me outside the enclave. Oh. Wrong button again, but uh, we'll just take to it.
Hey, over there. I admit I was hoping for a more leisurely trip around Yangshui, but it's a choice between this and listening to my brother rattle on. Hmm, here I am. <clears throat> With that, something could be done with these mechanical soldiers. Nay, can this truly be Monzen, home to the cream of the Doma Samurai? I had heard that Yotsu intended to send some... Some few of our automata here, but only by way of warning, it should not have come to this. Indeed, has savagery served only to incense the people and spur them to rise up in protest, it was folly to think such message of methods of governance could ever prove effective. Ah, the sooner we can begin to make amends of this senseless destruction, the better. Curing supplies and support for the reconstruction effort would should not prove difficult once our nations are formally at peace. Yes, of course. If you would have a better view of what remains of the castle, you must proceed through the ruins. There. Hit the right button that time. I don't believe for one moment that he came to see the sights of Yangsha. The question is, what did he come for? Lord Yan would often come here to gaze at the castle. He, he was but one of many to take inspiration for its majesty. It is a travesty. A travesty. I remember the keep being so beautiful in the light of the setting sun. One would swear it was a flame. It is indeed a doleful spectacle. Mayhap we will rebuild it one day. We have finished helping our, peop your, our people to rebuild their lives. Spoken like a true popularis. The need of the people... Oh, wait a minute. There is a different pe person seeing. These are the people must, of course, come first. I, I need to look at who's talking. Speaking of whom, would you be opposed to seeing how they live first hand? The village of Namai is but a short journey from here, if I'm not mistaken. By river, yes. If you will follow me, I will ready our boat. This discussion has proven to be more relaxing than I expected. It had been some time since I last visited Namai, yet Issei often visits the enclave with young Asumi, so we do not want and so we do not want for news from the village. Ready to cast off? And for some reason we are going into uh duty. Want with you. 
I thought they had this guy. Ain't this a VO? <sighs> that seems to be the last of them. You have nothing to fear, child. You are safe now. Saved us again. Thank you. If you're ever passing by our village, look us up. You'll always be welcome. I thought that was a given before. Thank goodness we arrived when we did. Indeed. But what could have prompted the Red Coden to stray so far from the Ruby Sea? 
I presume these are the cell swords hired by Yotsu. If so, the answer is simple. Desperation. Bereft of Imperial employment, they seek other means to line their coin purses. Another sad legacy of the Empire's mismanagement. The Empire to which you have sworn allegiance. Must you always be so pointed? If we are to bring about lasting change, we must look beyond narrow allegiances. You have every right to doubt me. But in time, I hope you will come to see that we share a common goal. You and yours have fought fiercely to change the Empire from without. But if we are to end the cycle of conflict, the Empire must change from within. Am I wrong? Never? I wonder, would you have said the same of Ishgard? Believe what you will, but I assure you, the Empire can change. Poof it! Oh, excuse me. Dear me, I had hoped to convey my views when nations shared hopes under more peaceful circumstances. Yet this regrettable little interlude did afford me a chance to see the famed hero of Eorzea in action. And few Imperial soldiers can say that. At least, few who live to tell the tale. Well, after this, that little ordeal, I believe it may be time for us to return to the Enclave. Return, my lord? What of Namai, who seems so eager to observe the villagers, doing what they're done, going about their daily lives? To be frank, I still am, but I rather doubt the good people of Namai would take kindly to the sight of a man in imperial uniform of blood all dripping from his blade. Even in your company, my presence would, would only prove a distraction. Fret not, however. Thanks to the three of you, I have seen a great deal more than otherwise would. And with any luck, Lord Hien will have finished his consideration, considering my proposal by the time we return. to the Domino Cliff. <laughs> There's no flying zone, so I have to walk around. We might have a, uh, a, a VO. Here. I'm gonna keep the volume as it is. Thank you again for agreeing to join me. If not for your aid, the Kojin may well have overwhelmed us. Pray go on ahead. Lord Hien is expecting you. I'll remain without and keep watch over our guest. Well, we had best not keep him waiting. I trust you will inform Lord Yen of our encounter with the Red Cogent. 
If we are to deter them from the encroaching on Yangsha, our response will be swift and decisive. I understand you have served as an ambassador's escort, I see. Judging by the sparkle in Alphalone's eyes, the discussion was riveting. Oh, sorry, I am to have missed it. Master Alphano has shared with us his knowledge of the icons and reminded us of the threat they pose in doing so. Do it. In so doing, it is strangely comforting to know the Empire shares our concern. Feeling refreshed, I trust. I have considered the ramifications of this proposal from every angle, and I believe Lord Hien has reached a decision. Welcome back, my friends. Yugri tells me you accompanied her and Asahi on a tour of Yangsha. I hope that we might take the opportunity to recover from your exertions at uh, Saka Sakazuki. But I gather your time is well spent. Until the ambassador affords Yugri a chance to make a full report, however, I must rely on you to supply the details. So please tell me how it all unfolded. Red Cogin, here. Yeah. Have there been any other incidents since the liberation? Not that I am aware of. They are planning some new venture here in Yangsha. We would need to increase patrols. In any event, I am indebted to you for fighting them off. But tell me, and don't be modest, was Asahi truly the first to leap to the Yungsu's aid? He was. I was quick to doubt him when we've, we first met, but his desire to save them seemed quite genuine. It is possible possible he truly believes that, what he's saying. In the time I know you, you have always had an excellent judge of character. What do you think make of the ambassador? I still don't think he can be trusted. I don't like that guy. Then the question of what his true intentions may be, regardless of his aim, I'm resigning to playing his game, for now at least. Well... Well, swearing and summoning would be simple enough, considering we never dabbled it in the first place, which just leaves the somewhat thornier question of how to police the Red Kojin. It was with that great very question in mind that I sought Alphano's counsel. Thanks to his knowledge of the icons and the rituals used to invoke them, I believe we've identified a workable solution. As you will recall, Susana was summoned forth using the powers of relics locked away in the Kojin treasure vault on the Isle of Zen Zeki. Though said relics remain there to this day, it is all but certain that the act of summoning exhausts their stores of ether, making subsequent summonings impossible. Assuming that is the case, preventing the primal's return rests by denying the Kojin the means to amass new stores of ether, either via the acquisition of crystals or the relics they are wont to collect. For this, I plan to enlist the aid of our friends at the Blued Kojin. Since Doma's liberation, we have fought Forged closer bonds with Bunshin, Bunshin and his people, and with their support, I'm confident we can keep the Red from obtaining what they they require to call upon this Susano. And what of the prisoners? They will be exchanged as agreed, and I will give full credit to Asahi for the success of the transaction. If there is aught we can do to help the popularity on our favor, I mean to see it done. But first, I have some unfinished business to attend to. Would you all come with me? Yes, of course. But what manner of business? A past mistake which I would put see, put right. One which is weighed heavy on my mind.
The world has not been kind to you, it is true. But that does not excuse your sins. You should be at the bottom of the river. He's eating Dongo, and I'm gonna trying to see what Dongo he is. It's a Japanese doubly made for from rice flour mixed with Yurushi rice flour and glutinous rice flour. Flour is different from the method of making. Mochi, which is made from steaming glutinous rice. Dango is usually finished around shape. Three to five dango is often served on a skewer. Generally, dango comes under the category of wagashi, often served with green tea. It's like a pastry. It can be flavored with stuff. Or a donut. Pastry made with Versailles. Yet here you are. The living, breathing proof of my failure. A failure for which I would now make amend. What? What did I do? I don't remember. Was it really so terrible? Tell me, please! What did I do? You speak of sins, my lord. But at whose feet do those sins lie? Were the soldiers who committed the crimes, or those who commanded them to do so? With both, I would say. For all have a conscience, and all must choose. But with no memory of who she is, or what she has done, what sin remains to be cleansed? You ask that I show mercy? I ask. Why the heavens saw fit to deny me my rest? Why Yotsuyu was spared not only death, but the bitter memories of her life? You truly think it the will of the Kami? If so... Her life is not mine to take. It is yours to safeguard. Come the hour of the exchange. If her memories have not returned, she may remain here in Doma to live out her days as Tsuyu. But if they do, the Guardians shall have their Viceroy. Though the people will protest, they will come to accept my decision when they have been reunited with their loved ones. Thank you, my lord. Now then, I believe we have kept our guests waiting long enough.
Did Gorsetsu not seem strange to you? His sympathy for Yotsuyu apart, I mean. I know his powers of endurance only too well, but after all he has suffered, even he should not be on his feet. He puts on a brave face for our sakes, but it would not surprise me if he lacked the strength to raise his blade. Though I suppose if he and Yotsu are to enjoy a life of peace and quiet, he will have little use for it. It falls to us to shape that future, one in which he need never again set foot on the battlefield. I thanks to your service is retirement. We're out of the talking part for a while, or the uh, VO for a while. Here's an armor cart, a coffer, which really I don't need. That's all right. With Yatsuyu's safety and Gotsetsu's care, all that remains is to answer Asahi's proposal. I realize other matters depend but your attention, but I would ask that you stay a while longer to see this business through. I think we're back to VO. <laughs> Ready. My apologies. Our deliberations took longer than expected. Think nothing of it. The time afforded me the opportunity to go on a rather rousing excursion through Yansha. You have reached a decision then? We are willing to cooperate with you in combating the Icon threat, and also in the exchange of prisoners. Assuming you accept our conditions, of course. As you know, your sister is in our care. Due to certain complications, however, we are hesitant to release her into your custody. Complications? She was inside Doma Castle when it collapsed. Though she survived, she remembers nothing of her past life, not even her name. To clarify, she is in our care not as a prisoner, but as a vulnerable citizen of Doma. Are you saying you refuse to release her? Not at all, if her memory returns before the appointed hour. And if not, what exactly? You will accommodate her here in Dorma? Well, I sincerely doubt she will be of any great strategic value to the Empire. She spends her days daydreaming of Dango. Dango? How dreadful. Very well. In light of our recent misstep in Sakazuki, it seems only fair that I show you the same understanding you have shown us. Though I do have one small request. Regardless of Yotsuyu's value to the Empire, she is yet my sister. Before I leave, might you permit me to speak with her in private? Of course. Perhaps you could even bring her a plate of dango. She would be most pleased. You, Giri, will see you to her chambers. Understand? 
forgive me, my lord, but has he not been gone over long? Perhaps I should... Calm yourself, Gosetsu. I understand your concern, but we have to wait. He deserves that much. I am sorry to keep you, have kept you all waiting. Thank you for your understanding. Long did I dream of this reunion, but never did I imagine it would be so joyless. Part of me hoped our, your stories of her condition were just that. But alas, it is as you say. To you, do you remember anything of this man? Anything at all? Uh, I know. Hold on, quick, uh, need to reply quickly to my dad. As you wish. Now, if you will excuse me, my superiors are long overdue a report. They will be elated to hear of your our agreement, and of that I have no doubt. As for the exchange itself, once I have obtained the relevant permissions, I will arrange for your people to be relieved of their various duties and sent here to Yangsha. This will take some take time, of course. Of course, you may rest assured your soldiers will be well cared for until your return. We will also begin taking steps to better counter the threat to the Kojin and their icon. Before you take your leave, there is one other matter. I am informed, informed it was you who took the lead in rescuing two young domans from a band of Kojin cell source. I have not yet had the time to thank you properly. Please, it is no need to thank me. I only did what anyone would do under the circumstances. Fortunately, I was in good company at the time. The blight of the Red Kojin is of the Empire's making... Were not for our transgression, those children would not have needed saving. The people of Doma have suffered enough, my lord. I promised you all in my power to spare them further pain, be it at the hands of the Koji or indeed the Empire. I pray the Empire will see things as they as you do. There may yet be hope for us all. Until we meet again. Busetsu, as before, I leave Yatsuyu to you. I invite the rest of you to join me outside. Let's treat Asahi to a proper farewell. If Yatsu is to remain in Doma for good, we cannot keep her confined to this manner. The people must be made to see that she is no longer the monster they remember. If my dear sister's memory does return, I pray you will take good care of her. Her. Does not return. Lord Hien has made a wise decision. Our superiors will be pleased. <laughs> Wonder if the sight of her, her stepbrother might bring Yatsuyu back to her senses, but mayhap nothing will. Nevertheless, we must continue to watch her until it is certain that her condition is permanent.
Without the threat of Imperial attack hanging over our heads, we can devote our energies to dealing with the Red Cogen, and there will be nothing left to impede Doma's restoration. If only our previous encounters with the Empire had been this cordial. Yes, to the future, I suppose. The Ambassador's airship awaits at Castrum Fluminus. Let us be off. And bottle falling on the floor. This has been a most enjoyable visit. I look forward to our next meeting. Did he just say that robotically? This has been a most enjoyable visit. I don't like it. Maxima. Would you take the others and see that all is ready for our departure? I simply cannot leave without first giving thanks to the Warrior of Light for accompanying me through Yansha. Mark me, savior of the savages. There will be a reckoning. Why? 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 If he's even trying to deceive us, why is he strictly telling us directly that he is lying through his fucking teeth? Why? And he's giving me the opportunity to receive a vision and an echo. Jesus Christ. You've nowhere left to run, traitor! Ignorant savages! Killing us will avail you naught! For every Imperial you cut down, a thousand more will come! Abandon this foolish endeavor and surrender. You may yet serve our righteous cause. How dare you speak of righteousness? You who forsook kith and kin to serve conquerors! Be glad I grant you this mercy. It's our friend. Reinforcements? No, just one. Cut him down. This one is promising. 
Who remains to offer us resistance? A host of rebels led by Lord Cayenne hold the Enclave across the river. Lord Cayenne? The king of the... The former king of Dorma, sir. They say he is one of the greatest swordsmen alive. Is that what they say? Who was that? Surely you jest. That was Xenos Ye Galvas, Legatus of the Twelfth, the Crown Bloody Prince. I heard he was strong, but that... that was frightening. That was... Lord Xenos. Everything you are, your power, even your face, it vexes me. Go on. Lash out like the beast you are at an emissary and jeopardize the newfound peace between Dorma and the Empire. I'd beat your face in right now, but I'm at least smart enough to know when not to. My lord was destined to lead us unto a glorious new age. Your light is nothing to his radiance. Seriously, this entire conversation is the worst idea he has ever had. Or, it, I, I don't, like, if he was smart enough to, like, try to pull the wool over everybody's eyes for this, then sure. Then he prob probably would have been, like, should have been, like, trying to deceive even me. But no! He has to go, and as he's leaving for this, show his true colors. Why? Oh, God. He's such a moron because you know what's going to happen after this? I'm going to tell him what... I'm going to tell everybody what you talked to me about. I will cherish this moment. Lock it away within my heart until the day we meet again. It's the idiocy is just unfathomable. You're trying to deceive these people, and you tell one of the most important people your plans. Well, not exactly your plans, but that you, I've been saying not to trust you this entire time. I could explain this, and, and, and yeah. Echo, somebody must have noticed me like clutching my head in the, my normal fashion of, of getting an Echo Vision. I mean, come on. You look troubled, my friend. Was it something he said? Uh, everything he said, and this little vision I had. Of all the memories to witness. I had my doubts about him, but I would never have guessed he was a disciple of Xenos.
my lord. Calm yourself, you giddy. I set no store by him or his enlightened brethren. But if by treating with them there is even the faintest hope we might secure the return of our conscripted brothers and sisters, I must play this game. After the way I risked their lives in the rebellion, I owe them that much. My lord, you bear no blame for their fate. If not blame, then responsibility. They were prisoners, and still I chose to fight, knowing they could be executed in retaliation. But now we have a chance to bring them home. If it means bargaining with a monster, so be it. My lord. Besides, I think he likes me. Which is more than some can say. Makes no sense. Why he would he bother keeping up the pretense for so long, only to drop it right before the very end? See? Alize understands. Perhaps he no longer thought it necessary, having secured Doma's cooperation in the prisoner exchange. If he truly is a disciple of Zenos, it is possible emotions simply got the better of him, meaning calmer on the man who slew his lord would have taken this toll. Whatever the explanation, now is not the time for hasty reprisals. We shall proceed as planned. The Red Kojin must be placed under surveillance and the Galian prisoners made ready for the exchange. But we need not concern yourself with the details. Leave the affairs of Doma to us. When the hour of the exchange draws near, we will call upon you. I should certainly hope so. Whatever the Empire's true intent, we would be on hand to play our part, either to defend Doma or to help usher in a lasting peace. I had thought we might use this time to return to Eorzea, uh, but given the volatility of the situation, perhaps it would be best if we remained in Kugane. Agreed. Between Yotsu's amnesia and Asahi's dubious agenda, I'd say we have ample reason to remain in the neighborhood. If anything should happen, anything at all, you must send... You must send for us at once. Oh, I will. And that w you have my word. Trotting the path through this seed is... Uh, mouth being weird. See, is trouble pro of troubles promises to be difficult enough. I am not so proud as to, to attempt the feat alone. To Kugane, then. And Tataru and the others must know what transpired here. If what you saw of the ambassador is an indication of his true nature, his, his prisoner exchange may not be what it seems. In fact, I'm beginning to wonder if our encounter with the Red Cosian was more than, than happenstance. Soon we shall see if Asahi is true to his word. If not, it will be I will be glad to cut out that silver tongue of his.
Meanwhile, back in Kugane, Alize. I don't envy Lord Yen. There is so much rest in, on his decision. As we have not else to attend to for the moment, perhaps this would be a good opportunity to look in the present state of Garlemald, though I should possibly probably speak with Tataru first. Welcome back, as Ghost. We heard the good news uh, about Gosetsu. I knew you would find him. One of these days I'll get Tataru's voice correct. Uh, I don't think this is his voice acted. Why? My, it seems you have all been quite the predicament. Well, should you receive any urgent missives from Doma, rest assured you will be the first to know it. Yes, of course. We were discussing... <coughs> yes, of course. We were discussing the idea to replenish our coffers, but I suppose that all can wait until any urgent news would come through the office. Uh, <coughs> for, about that, I, I wish to apologize to Taru. Um, it was reckless for me to make such a purchase without first consulting you. Uh, I, you may be certain, however, that I mean to reimburse the, the science, even if it means drawing upon my personal funds. It's very thoughtful of you, but I'm sure that won't come to that. Sharban's business proposition is, is as promising as it sounds. Essigo should have no difficulty wiping the red from our ledger. What? Forgive me, Essigos. It would seem I've unwittingly heaped my financial troubles upon you. I swear I'll pay back. But I fear I will struggle to cobble together anything of monetary value. Knowledge I can gather in abundance. To start, I plan to investigate the divisions forming within the Empire. Mayhap... Or... <sighs> Alpha now. Let's try to get Alpha now's voice. <laughs> to start, I plan to investigate the divisions forming within the Empire. Perhaps Royal... And his associates have heard something on the subject. Regardless, the more we know of the politics of Gardemont, the better our chance of, of predicting the Imperial's next move, which might yield, yield you an advantage on the day of the prisoner exchange. Knowing what we do, we do of Asahi's apparent resentment towards you, I cannot say what he hopes to gain from it. But if there is even the faintest chance that a lasting peace could be forged between Doma and the Empire, what choice do you? Have we but to try? Lord Hien has the right of it. Asahi may well, may very well be a monster, but we must play this game for now. I don't need any of this. Arrange the prisoner exchange proved the prisoner exchange proved easier than I thought. Well, my lord will be most pleased. Everything is going according to plan. You conniving bastard. Leo.
Were we friends? Yes. We were good friends, you and I. In fact, I've brought you a gift. Look, we've already had vision, Echo Vision, where they they were not good friends. I pray that one day soon, as you gaze into that mirror, you will remember the woman staring back at you. It's so pretty. Who are you? Who are you? Meanwhile, in the Imperial capital. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. How are you feeling, my lord? Fine, now leave me. I forgot it was important news to share. The time for the prisoner's stage has come because we just switched patches. Thank you. Turn it down. Ah, it's a ghost. Impeccable timing. We have just received a letter from Lord Hien. He writes that the Domans are uh, coordinating their efforts with the Blue Cogent and to maintain a constant watch over the Red. By staying on the on the lookout for a sign of crystals hoarding and the like, they mean to nip any summoning attempts in the bud, thereby satisfying the conditions of peace set down by the ambassador. For the Guardian's part, the Popularis have sent word that a vessel bearing Roman conscripts is soon to arrive in Yenksha, would seem the prisoner exchange is to proceed as planned. Lord Hien requests our presence, and I share his view that we should, you should be on, the, on hand at this crucial juncture. According to the letter, Yatsuyu's memory has yet to return, so it, it looks like she'll be living out the rest of her days in Doma, assuming the ambassador me means to honor the agreement, of course. Before we get to that, however, I think it would be wise to assess her condition one last time. The Domans have missed any change in her mental state, however slight, it would be better if Sahi weren't the one to spot it. Agreed. Let us make sideway straight ways for this enclave, then. Lord Hien will be waiting. I trust we will cope with our absence, Tataru. Mm. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Just be sure to come back safely. I've noticed been keeping a very careful count of his coins lately. I doubt he'll, he'll ask for a sip of water without asking the price first. <laughs> I'm very much in favor of a peace agreement between Doa and the Empire. Loosen that Imperial grip, I say, and let the trade throughout breathe freely. You might watch. Ups. Making noises.
To the Domino Cleave. Sometimes I get turned around coming out from my eighth right. Oh, somebody showing off his uh, shiny uh, sword and shield. Go check, Norris. Where did you get this from? Oh, looks like it's an animal weapon. But he is expecting you. May I show you it? I don't know why I read that. It's it's the standard talk about letting you in to a place. We know the broad strokes of his letter, but I would hear the details of our Doman friend's progress from Lord Hian himself. Ever since he he drained our coffers dry dry buying that sword, Alfino has had his purse strings in death grip. I can't even buy a cup of tea without him going on with the dangers of frivolous spending. Well, at least he learned his lesson. I, I'm just surprised that Taro wasn't matter. Ah, I see my letter reached you across the Ruby Sea. Thank you for coming so swiftly. Though I wrote at some length in the subject of the forthcoming exchange, there's one other matter I neglected to mention. It concerns Gosetsu. As you may have observed, he returned from his ordeal rather the worse for wear, and despite his best efforts to conceal his condition, or perhaps because of them, he recently collapsed. <gasps> Good gods, is he all right? Confined to bed and grumbling without cease, but he has shown signs of recovery. He made me promise not to tell you, lest, lest you worry unduly, which was all very well when you weren't here. Now that you are, however, I think it's high time he receives some visitors. Might you spare him a moment? Yotsu is scarce left his side, and I imagine you are curious to see what has become of her as well. We will visit him at once. Eskos, Alize, shall we? I think this is his voice acting. Open wide now. Please, to you. I'm not so frail that I cannot feed myself. Ah, I grow weary of the taste of gruel. You don't like it? Can I fetch you something else? Aye, wine! Or if that is not wholesome enough, I don't know. A sweet persimmon from Namai? I enjoyed them in my youth. A persimmon? Nay, pay me no mind. I am full. Besides, we have guests. We are not interrupting your meal. We had heard you were confined to bed and thought you might welcome some visitors. Confined to... A gross exaggeration. A trifle drained from my exertions, perhaps. But with a little rest, I shall be fighting fit again in no time. Take off your clothes. Gosetsu, is this how you've been spending your time? My lady, I assure you, this is not. Off with them. We need to wash you. You stink. <laughs> 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 oh, 
What are all these scars? There are so many of them. A life of battle will leave its mark upon a man. Is something wrong to you? It's nothing. I'm fine. But leave me be, woman. I will not be fussed over like some newborn babe. back to Norvio. They make a convincing pair, do they not? At first acquaintance, I would think of him a doting grandsire and her a model grandchild. Indeed. Had someone told me a year ago that I would live to bear witness to such a scene, I would have declared them mad. And aside, I'm relieved to see Gosetsu has lost none of his spirit. And what a turn of events. I mean, for her to suddenly be wa watching over him. Uh, you couldn't make that up. Although I suppose Gosetsu is an old man. The way he char charges through life can be easy to forget. Aye, he has resisted decrepitude with the same def defiance he showed the enemies of Doma. But no matter how adamant his will, no man can carry on forever. He has pushed himself to the limits of endurance too many times. Even if his health returns, back remains, he will never again be the warrior he once was. He has given his all for the Asian land, and we will ask no more. And what of his nurse? If Yatsuyu is feigning that, well, certainly has me fooled. This is no pretense. Yukari, out of all of us, I would think the hardest to convince. So what makes you so sure? I've been spying on Yatsuyu from the shadows, waiting for the misstep that would betray her charade for what it was. But her mask has never slipped, not once. She has remained a character from the first. One evening I watched her as she sat in her chambers, unguarded and alone. She had taken the dishes from the cupboard and was pretending to prepare dinner right there at the tatami. Child's game. Even the weariest shinobi would not go to such lengths. I can but conclude that her mind is truly broken. Well, that's good enough for me and everyone else, I would hazard. Aye, the matter is settled. Yatsuyu will become Suyu and be begin a new life here in Domo. Before that can happen, however, we will need to present her to the ambassador one last time to prove that her memory is truly gone and it would not risk parading her in front of our returning conscripts, her presence at the exchange would only stir up mutinous thoughts. Understandably, she's as good as fastened the chains around their neck. Aye. Which is why I mean to conclude this business with Suyu first, out of the sight of my countrymen. Do you help me? We are at your service. There is no higher purpose than the pursuit of peace. My thanks. The Guardians are on the way, and we must prepare to welcome the Ambassador. We'll meet you at the docks. We'll see you. The skiff will take us to our meeting with the Ambassador. He will join you at the docks once prepared. preparations have been made. Even after weeks of surveillance, it's difficult for me to accept that Yatsuyu's condition was genuine, but not as difficult as accepting and sets his affection for her. Yeah, I'm making stops to, to get kind of like... And he's still standing here. 
AFK, what the chair icon is. He hasn't logged out yet, so he must not have been there for too long. I believe right now there are, um, to provide, con to reduce congestion on the ser on their servers, if you're idle for like 30 minutes, then they automatically log you out, which is fair enough. I think WoW does that too. Shall we wait here then? Lo Tien should not be long. My friends, have you seen Suyu? She is nowhere to be found. What? What? But the Guardians have, will be landing in a matter of moments. If she's fled, could it mean her memories have returned? I know not. Yuguri is scouring the streets as we speak, but it's possible Suyu has left the enclave altogether. Captain, a word. Did you perchance ferry a fair-skinned woman across the river? A fair-skinned woman, Lord? Uh, I don't rightly know. I think... Yes, yes, my lord. Now that you mention it, there was, the, there was a lady among the passengers who I do not recall having seen before. Her face was hidden by the brim of her hat, but I remember taking her hand to help her onto the boat. White as the new-fallen snow it was. Was, was she something impo somewhat important, my lord? Have I done something wrong? Wrong? No, no. I'm merely hoping to catch our guest before she departed. Be at ease, Captain. Would seem the CEO has crossed the river. Kami, help me. No good has come to this. Bunch of coffers for classes I have nowhere... <laughs> no need for it. Don't worry, I'll sell it to the domans. It seems Suyu has gone unrecognized thus far, but can you help me if someone catches a clear view of her face? I might find her before that happens. The responsibility of her disappearance for all of this lies with me, but I would ask that for your aid nonetheless. Yeah, I assume it's Lord Hien. Now, as before, let us make the crossing and begin our search. You go on ahead. Someone should let Yugri know that we'd, what we've learned. I'll join you on the other side. I have no way of knowing where Suyu is headed, so we best define our forces. I will take Kusakari as, and its surrounds. Alpha Note, would you take the, the road to Castrum Fulminus? This goes, forgive me, but I would ask that you interrogate. <clears throat> the residents of the Yakuza Manor. One of the Namazu, Namazu may well have seen our quarry. If any, everyone is in agreement, let us board the skiff and hope the Kami smile upon our efforts. Welcome to the Yakuza Manor. Manor, yes, yes. If there's anything you care to know, you only need, need only hmm, a pale skin or woman. I have seen no such traveler. I'm sorry to say, most sorry. Scaly skin Namazu, on the other hand, uh, we have an abundance. Unusually pale skin. Yes, yes. I saw this woman on the way back from the fishing trip. She was just crossing the, the shallows east of here and was heading into the northeasterly direction for the most part. Her steps did not seem certain. If you hurry, you might catch her. Let's go catch her.
see no signs of Yatsuyu to the north. Perhaps she's somewhere off to the northeast. Still no sign of Yatsuyu. Perhaps she is yet further to the northeast. Yatsu is nowhere to be seen, but lying on the ground a short distance to the north, you spy a familiar looking wide bird hat. Cursory glance is all that is required to confirm that your suspicion is the same hat Yatsu was wearing when you found her in Sakazuki. We got VO? We might not. I need to have to turn this back down. Nope. Let's go. Before, before you ask, I'll search for Kusaka, of Kusakari and surrounding of the yield. Exactly not. Save the, this chance reunion with you, I suppose. Mistress Alize was gone to assist her brother in the cast room. It was she who informed me of the situation. I joined Lord Hien here shortly thereafter. How did you fare at Yakuza Manor? Any sign of our missing guest? Yeah, they saw her. They said they saw her this way, and I found this hat. Towards Namai? By the Kami, if the villagers recognize her, it will not end well. We must hurry. You agree, and I will check the paddles. Paddies. The village square is yours. Save us! Her spirit has returned! She's back from the dead to seek her revenge! People of Namai, be at ease, I pray you. You have naught to fear. My lord, forgive me, but what is that monster doing here? They told us she... I too was surprised to learn of her survival. 
More even than you, I would hazard. Twas I who cut her down, I who left her to her fate. But it would seem the Kami had other plans. By some miracle, both she and Gosetsu were spared when the keep collapsed, though Yotsugu's preservation came at the cost of her memory. You're saying she's forgotten? Forgotten everything she's done? Lies! Lies! My lord, she would say anything to escape punishment! What does it matter? We have not forgotten her crimes, and we demand justice! I beg of you, Lord Hien, draw your blade and rid us of this canker! What I saw then, it's all true. I'm sorry! I'm so, so... You're sorry? And what? We're supposed to forgive you! Here, there's no need to cry. Can't you see how scared she is? How can you be scared of her? She's not the same. The children are our future. Until such time as her memories return, this woman shall be known as Tsuyu and treated as a citizen of Doma. I will, however, see that she is watched at all times. Rest assured that there will be no more unannounced visits to the village. As your lord, I ask that you leave her fate in my hands and suffer her to live for now. Please, Ise. All right. I'll keep my peace. As long as you're happy, that's all that matters. Good job there, girl. I'm not scared of her. Not anymore. Can't forget what that woman did to us. But I won't do anything to upset a Sumi. Bummy. All of this over a persimmon. I failed to consider how she might endanger herself knowing she was the mind of a child. I should have continued my vigilance, not relax it. I don't know why everybody's so angry, but I got the food Gosetsu wanted. I hope he likes it. <sighs> that would have been 
been better avoided. But at least it did not end in bloodshed, and judging from Suyu's reaction, she remains oblivious to the events of her former life. This was no escape attempt. Nay, it seems like an offhand request from Kosetsu which brought her to the Mai. Came in search of a persimmon. Ha! Huh. And they say fruit is good for the health. We hope Gosetsu finds a, a taste to liking. Well, we have certainly taken the long way around, but let us continue on to Castrum Fluminus and our meeting with the ambassador. Alphano and Alize should be there, should still be there conducting the search. I was sure Yotsu had fled, but it seems her memory hasn't returned after all. How foolish of me not to consider Gosetsu's craving for seasonal fruit. The Imperial airship has arrived. Whether our conspirates are aboard remains to be seen. Do we have to stay here long? He'll be waiting for his fruit. Lord Yen informed us of the uproar at mine. I think the twelve you found Yatsuyu when you did. I dare not think what might have happened had you not. Seems our Imperial guests have already arrived. It's time to meet with the Ambassador. What a pleasure it is to see you once more, Lord Hien. Not to mention my dear sister. A pleasure to see you too, Ambassador. Forgive us our late arrival. You have our people aboard the airship? Exactly as agreed. We would leave you in no doubt as to the purity of our intentions. I dare say it was the self-same spirit of cooperation which prompted you to bring Yotsuyu here today. Indeed. Before excluding her from the exchange, I thought it only fair that you see her condition for yourself. Physically, she is in fine health, but her mind is unchanged. So I see. But all need not necessarily be lost. In anticipation of this tragic turn of events, I took the liberty of inviting some special guests.
Ah, Yatsuyu. You look well. Something wrong, dear sister? These are our beloved parents. Does not the sight of them bring back sweet childhood memories? My little surprise was not sufficient. You needn't glare at me so, Lord Hien. I merely did what any loving son would do for his family. Lest you doubt, I am content to leave the acting Viceroy in your care. Pray, treat her as you would any daughter of Dorma. Do not grow too fond of this place, dear sister. You will come back to us ere long. We continue with the exchange as planned, then. Very good. The structure across the river should serve our needs. We shall await you there with the conscripts. If you would bring your captives. Agreed. Until then, Ambassador. I don't want to be crunching in anybody's ear. I knew better than to trust Asahi, but that was a dirty trick. Still, unpleasant as it was, we have at least put the matter of Suyu's future to rest. I've sent her back to the enclave with Yugiri to give Kotsetsu his precious person. Come, let us follow them. You have that look, Alphano. What is it? Oh, nothing of consequence, most like. We'll discuss it upon our return. I suppose Suyu is better than become an official Dolman citizen. But what then? Then, will they keep her hidden here forever? Or might she one day be able to walk amongst her countrymen? So it would seem there would be one less person at the exchange. I only hope Yatsuyu's presence here will not further the further problems. 
We should pay a vi visit to Gosetsu and reassure him of Suyu's fate. He will want to know that the Empire has finally relinquished his claim on her. Gosetsu, are you awake? My lord, come in, come in! When Tsuyu returned, her eyes were red from weeping. She spoke not a word, simply sat and peeled some fruit she'd brought for me. She then claimed weariness and retired to her chamber. Tell me, what happened to upset her so? The ambassador arranged a surprise reunion with her foster parents. A misguided attempt to restore Yotsuyu to her senses. It was plain their presence caused her great distress, but she seemed otherwise unaffected. Yotsuyu was mistreated as a child, was she not? It was a cruel trick to use her tormentors like that, knowing the pain it could cause. I like this Asahi less and less. Be that as it may, he has agreed to allow Yotsu to remain with us in Doma. Our primary concern now is to hand over the prisoners without incident and bring our people safely home. There was one other detail at the meeting which caught my attention. I assume you all noticed the rather suspect crates within the castrum. The Imperials were quick to retrieve them afterwards, but I wonder. Out with it, brother. You fear they might contain bombs or war machines? If the Ambassador wanted me dead, he has had ample opportunity. No, assassination is not his intent, but we should be on our guard for other acts of treachery. Forgive me, but the lady yachts you. She's gone. Gone? I beg your pardons, my lords. I was certain she'd fallen asleep. No, no, the responsibility is mine. Twas I who gave her a room instead of a cell. She may simply have wandered outside. We will organize search parties. Might I call upon your assistance? Who it is? Help! Help me! I hadn't remembered.
He should hate me. But I will not suffer his kindness. Not after what I did to him. Who's there? <gasps> oh, it's you. What are you doing out here in the dark? This is the Enclave, is it? When the soldiers dragged us back to Doma, you were the last person I expected to see. You're the bane of our existence, Yotsuyu! A font of misery! You couldn't even do us the simple courtesy of dying, could you? Oh no! You had to live and taint us with the shame of your failure! We had a perfect life in the capital, and now they're making us wallow in this muddy ruin like common swine! I don't deserve this! Now, now, dear, that'll do. There seems little point in berating the girl when she scarcely remembers her own name. Our time would be better spent contemplating how we're to survive this unhappy predicament. <laughs> You've kept your looks, at least. I suspect you'd fetch a handsome price with the right buyer. Maybe enough to get us to Kugani and start a new business. <laughs> Man, you're brilliant. The entire family uh, are idiots. My beloved parents. No sooner do I wake from gentle slumber than the world returns in all its cruelty. Yes, this is how it always was. How it was meant to be. Very well. If I cannot escape my nature, then I shall embrace it. To the very depths I have sunk, my soul steeped in spite and rotten to the core. The self-righteous hide behind justice, but I need no such mask. Father, mother, was it not you who made me into this monster? Who taught me the truth of this miserable world? For years I knew naught but the taste of pain and humiliation. But the time has come to savor my vengeance against Dorma. Against all my enemies. And it begins... With you! Yatsuyu! <laughs> You could have just left her be, but no, no. She had forgotten about you. Why tell her anything about her past? Of course, it's all Asahi's plan. Well done, dear sister. Well, Did I not say you would come back to us? Entire family, idiots. Brother dearest, what a surprise. You always were a cold-blooded little worm. I doubt you thought twice about sending our parents to their deaths. 
Your dagger yet drips with their blood, and you presume to judge me? To be frank, I didn't think you had the strength to slay them so cleanly. A single thrust each? I'm impressed. But surely you can't be satisfied with murdering a pair of doddering elders. You yearn for a deeper vengeance, and the power to see it through. Okay. As Admiral Akbar would say, Please. Is it drop? I don't want to die. Any sign of her? So, before Lord Hien would have come up, here's what Essegos is thinking. Good riddance, you bastard. Because what Yatsuyu said about this being their fault, she, mother, be just constantly berating her for things, and his father being a really gross, just gross, misogynist dick. Being like, I will sell off my daughter to get enough money. Sell her into the, 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 as a cultism. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> they just, they're just gross. Just, yeah, they deserve to die. But it's like, you saying this to her, do you think especially if her memories are returning that something would have happened that, that that this wouldn't have happened that she wouldn't have lashed out especially after the cruelty that they must have known so uh, something about about this before like before they were brought here being living in the garland empire they probably heard something about her antics as the vice the acting viceroy in doma Maybe not. Maybe, maybe they're like just leaving their lives. Yep, out of the picture. I mean, she was about to kill herself. They would have been out of her, their life too, but no, they had to interrupt her from committing suicide. And look what happened. They're the one that's dead because they started to open their stupid mouths and make her angry. Partly, also, it was kind of stupid to, to be running off to commit suicide because she was thinking, I don't deserve this, I don't deserve this. But now that she remembers everything, it was a trap for the entire family. It's like a complete tragedy for this entire family. Well, not a tragedy. Because <laughs> the original Yatsuyu, yeah, her parents being such dicks. And, and well, well, we'll see what happens to this eyes. He's just no. You, you keep up the charade as long as possible. The only time you you break that is when everything is done. You may want to to to, to threaten the warrior of light because he killed your 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 bromance your. The one that you're totally in love and eyes sparkly with, Xenos. But you gotta hold your tongue. Idiots. Just, just a lot of them, idiots. Anyways, back to it. What happened here? That's who was about to commit suicide. They interrupted her and then recovered. fingered her. And still, I did nothing. You say she left with her brother? 
Whatever he wants with her, he was willing to pay for it with his parents' lives. But this is neither the time nor the place. We must gather the others. But Yatsuyu has returned to the bosom of the Empire after all. I cannot say I'm surprised, but what I struggled to fathom is the Sahi's aim in all this. So Sahi got his way in the end, and an unspeakable price. He really is a vile little worm, isn't he? Yatsuyu hid her recovery well. I had no inkling that her memory had returned. I keep asking myself when it could have happened. A meeting with her parents, perhaps? Or then, why would she... Nay, there's not to be gained from such conjecture. We have recovered the uh, Neuri's remains and will hold the ceremony, the cremation, and on. <sighs> Would that they had never again set foot in Doma. I broke the news to Gosetsu himself. He was quiet. I think it is best he be allowed some time alone with his thoughts. So, my friends, uh, that which we feared has come to pass. Yatsuyu has regained her memory and returned to the Imperial Fold. It is by any measure a cruel twist, not least for Gosetsu, but one which does not validate our agreement. According to the terms of the contract, we are bound to surrender Yatsuyu into the Guardian's hands should she, her condition improve prior to the hour of the exchange. By that reckoning, all is, if not as it should be, then it as it must be. This I can accept. But what I cannot accept was the unconscionable lengths of which Asahi went to achieve this outcome. Given his recent conduct and his apparent admiration for Xenos, it is plain that he cannot be trusted, and that is to say nothing of the unexpected containers he insists on bringing to our meetings. Whatever the ambassador is planning, I think it's unlikely our negotiations will end peacefully. In the event of hostilities, the safety of the conscripts must be our first concern. As such, I would have an escape route in place before the meeting begins. A wise precaution, if the main structure of Cadstrom Fulminus, Fulminus is to be the stage of the exchange, then I believe a thorough inspection is in order. The citadel has stood empty ever since the Imperial withdrawal. No, while we took steps to ensure that it could not be defended by an unoccupied force, it is entirely possible that the ambassador has arranged things there, there in his, to his advantage. I will slip inside and make certain we have an unobstructed exit. Pray allow me to join. I have some experience with imperial facilities, and would, and should such should matters take a turn for the worse, I would hope to be at least some, some use. Very good. That should be enough to guarantee us a way out of the castrum. Beyond that, however, we will need a ship to ferry the conscripts back to the Enclave. Even with every skiff we have, we should take several trips to evacuate everyone. A confederate uh, Sekibuni, on the other hand, would require only a single run, and leave us far less vulnerable in the water, assuming, of course, that Srasho can be convinced to part with one. Might I take the lead in this? I've had dealings with Rasho and his pirates before, and I won't be alone, will I, Esagos? Yeah, I suppose not. <laughs> well, that was enthusiastic. Were you hoping to join Yigri and Alphano on that skulking mission by any chance? Hmm, I am certain you wouldn't make a pers persuasive pair, but I think I will accompany you in these negotiations, so it's all the same. My lord, the ruler of Dunamis should not be seen consorting with common brigands. Come now, Yugiri. They stood with us against the Empire. If we would ask their aid once more, we would treat with them as equals. My presence shall serve to demonstrate our sincerity. Indeed, my lord. Pray forgive my presumption. By your leave, Master Alphano, I shall be to our latter task.
and we should be on our way to Onokoro. And the time is short, and Rasho may take, take some convincing. I mean, I don't need to go outside to do my teleportation, so. I'll see you there. Bye. Let's see Rasho. In my mind, I see as the seven of only one fate. Memory lost be damned. If you don't have the stones for it, you may be happy to take me up on the burden. I'll be over nice and swift. Now, oh, there is a face I did not expect to see. What brings the noble lord of Doman to the company of bilge rats such as, that, such as we? If you are come to offer Doman chains in place of guardian ones, then I'm afraid you've wasted a trip. Ha <laughs> ha Well, five stomachs you would make. With your fleet at our disposal, our restoration efforts would be hastened tenfold. But uh, let us speak seriously. I stand before you not to demand your fealty, but to request your aid once more. Explains the situation. Exposition. I, I need to do that. Exposition. Now, if you're confused, Doma's liberation was but a means to an end. We aided you only to save ourselves. Now you have no such incentive. You have sworn no oath to you and will not come running like hounds to their master's whistle. But I would not presume to treat you thus. I come to petition your cooperation as an ally of equal standing. Equal standing, you say? Seems a bit lopsided to me. Well... Where's the profit for us in all of this? Profit? Must you always think about s such short-sighted terms? Have you ever heard of doing the right thing? Have you ever heard of pirates, little miss? No find it. Son, we're simple souls. We pay your, you pay our tithes. We, you sail in peace. Deny us our due, and we take it by force. We'll pull you out of the water if we see you drowning, but you are not in the business of doing something for nothing. Calm yourself, Mistress Alice. We did not come here to moralize. We came here to talk. And there is more to be said. According to records recovered from the liberation, relatives of our domain-born brethren among those conscripted into the Imperial Army. And as we, you may be aware, we recently negotiated the terms of the return of said conscripts. Many, alas, will arrive to find no families waiting for them, no homes to grant them shelter. I would ask that you offer them a place in the Confederacy. You would not be rescuing strangers, but welcoming brothers and sisters to your ranks. And has not the Confederacy been in need of new recruits? Then says like, You seem well informed of our affairs, Lord Yen. The losses we suffered at the Guardian's hands is no secret, but since we drove them out of Doma, the Red Sea has come alive with traders and travelers. So many vex vessels to tax, so few privates to tax them. We could do with some more hands on deck, and doubtedly if they're, they're familiar with the inner workings of the Empire. Very well. The Confederacy agrees to your request. We will have your ship. But before that, you must do something for me. The vessel I have in mind was damaged during your, your battle with the Empire. So we have bended her, as she is yet to be declared seaworthy. She is sound enough down below, but when you load her up with conscripts and the water, li water line rises, those upper planks have, had best be free of cracks. Assuming we won't, you want your people to stay dry, we will do neither favor of swimming around the hull to check for weaknesses. That is, if Doman Lords are not averse to getting their robes wet. Not to this Doman Lord. If we each inspect a third of the ship, he'll be done in thrice. In thrice. 
As the spirits, the ship is moored at a uh, quick, sh quick escape pier. Our apprentice shipwright will be on deck to hear your report. Look for a lab named Ayanashi. And I thought I had a knack for parleying with pirates. For the record, my previous attempt was, was an unmitigated success. And yes, I should have quit while I was ahead. <laughs> Oh, well, I thought the rumors exaggerated, but the young lord lives up to his reputation. Who is it? It's over here. See no signs of damage here. Hi, I'm the shipwright, or apprentice ship, shipwright. Did you find anything in need of attention? The section I inspected seems solid enough. Uh, I did see this one bad plank over in the north, on the port side. On the port side? Near the vow, you say? All right, I'll have a look and see what I can do. My apologies. I seem to have lagged behind. I could float in that gentle sea all day. Otherwise, I'm happy to report no visible cracking or holes in my section of the hull. You, 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 your Lord Tien, Captain sent you to inspect the hull? Come here, mercy, forgive us this indiscretion, my Lord. Ha! Ah, it is quite all right. In fact, I rather enjoyed it. I'll take care. I take you off from Demo? Yes, my Lord. The Imperials look... It took my father away after the uprising. I had nowhere else to turn. The Confederacy became my family. But someone told me they're releasing the conscripts now. Maybe my father would be among them. Not that I can go back. There's no leaving once you've joined. How far is our lady? Is she seaworthy? Captain, uh, we found a small crack on the port side, but I'll have it fixed before you know it. I see you have met the boy. Did he tell you his story? He babbles when he has his nervous. Should her father be among the conscripts as he hopes, I mean to give him the choice to leave this life if he so chooses. I expect you to see they are provided for. I have heard that there are those who join the Confederacy for forswear all ties of kin in homeland. Is that oath so easily put aside? If I allow it. I see in him the lad I was twenty-five years ago. You say the words, you mean them, but the yearning for home still lingers. My family is long dead, and I know this life is my lot, but he has scarce dipped his toes with us. There's a lifer in Mendoma, he should have the chance to live it. Well said. The Empire's conquest has uprooted many and more. Be it in Yangsha or out on the Ruby Sea, we have a duty to ensure that... Inarashi and others like him are free to dwell where they desire. And the matter is settled. I will make preparations to cast off. Well, my friends, seems we have our ship. Let us return to the Enclave. I don't know why we walk off. I can just, like, teleport. 
Although really the teleportation is like game mechanics. <laughs> I suppose there's uh, like some in canon stuff, but a lot of the times you, you have things such as like this, where it's like a whole bunch of you traveling. As a former soldier of the Empire, I've been I have been chosen to oversee the handover of Imperial prisoners. Whilst I am so occupied, I must ask that you provide steadfast support for Lord Yen. I don't know Lupin's voice. Lord Hien is expecting you. May I show you in? I don't know why I read that. Again, I do that. It's the it's the standard doorman speech. The classroom was deserted, quite deserted. It was a simple matter to plot the surest path out. Heads, our switches. We found the classroom's tower unoccupied and betrayed no signs of recent activity. Only shadows and echoes await us there. Alfredo seemed oddly reluctant to linger, but I saw not to concern us. Alfredo tells me that they had little trouble finding a suitable route out of the castrum, and he won't say much more than that. If I didn't know any better, I'd think he was hiding something, though I can't imagine what. Uh, I, I think he get, it, it was kind of spooky to him. <laughs> so he's like, uh, if we're done, uh, can we get out of here? <laughs> Seems Yogi and Alphano completed their task before us. They have been waiting. We scattered the structure and determined the swiftest path, path to safety in the event of hostilities. We will leave the conscripts outside with all possible hate. From there, the Confederate Sea has pledged a ship to ferry us across the Wadden River. Now we have but to attend the exchange and pray to the Kami these precautions were unnecessary. It's a strength potion. Well, you're putting your... Oh, Jesus. I was so focused on everything, I didn't realize how long we've been streaming. Okay, we'll, we'll pause here. Actually, we'll just pause here, restart the stream. I need to quickly use the restroom top of my beverage. So, I'll be right back. We'll continue for a couple more hours. Might do it a little bit shorter just because I went over long. But, yeah, we'll, we'll... I'll be back in like two minutes. 